slide 6 shows the difference between traditional tax risk management and tax control framework. Many companies still have an as is situation around tax risk management as shown in red on the left, which is fragmented and operates ad hoc and reactive. Indicators are that action is only taken when an email pops up in your mailbox or the phone starts to ring. Tax team, we have a problem. On the right side you see an integrated approach, where the various work streams work together. Risk-based controls are implemented and, internally, communication follows the company's business control framework. I will show you an example later on. Slide 5 is about indirect tax department performance requirements. During the workshop we discuss the KPIs of the indirect tax function in detail as it is important to show all stakeholders what an indirect tax function is able to accomplish when it is set up under the right conditions. That means with support and sponsorship of senior management. I refer back to the slide about contributing to business objectives. The slide provides an overview of the deliverables and enablers of the indirect tax function to create, protect and optimize value in the range of business objectives. Slide 11 is about the materiality of tax risks and companies' risk appetite. Scoping of risks based on amounts is fairly straightforward. If a balance sheet item or profit and loss account is higher than a certain value, the risk is considered high. If it is below a certain value, the risk is considered low. The value that drives the classification is set by the organization. A VT control framework has different objectives, but also stakeholders. Managing risks on absolute amounts only is insufficient as VT complexity and the impact of change should be considered as well. Slide 12 is about scoping of VT risks and inherent risks. In our workshop we use complexity and change as the most important drivers to assess inherent risks. For each of these drivers we have defined a number of factors that are measurable, that support organizations in concluding on the drivers. To assess complexity we use the following factors. Volume of transactions, diversity of transactions, supply chain model, number of incidents, complaints and tax audit results, and the volume of manual processing and or corrections. For change, we use the following factors. The frequency of change in products and supply chain, Frequency and volume of change in people and processes, organizations, processes and systems, and impactful events such as merger and acquisition, outsourcing, centralization. Slide 13 is about how the tax risk universe looks like. The result of the risk assessment, materiality and inherent risk is shown in this table. 
This table shows a decision tree that is used in making scoping decisions. On the left, the possible result from a materiality perspective is shown. And on the top, the results from the inherent risks are shown. On the intersect, the conclusion is given whether or not a risk is in scope. Example. If risk from a materiality perspective is high, top row, then regardless of the inherent risk, the conclusion is that the risk is in scope. If materiality risk is considered low and the inherent risk as well, then the result is that the risk is not considered in scope, the right bottom cell. For certain combination, the decision tree shows depends. It is up to the organization to conclude about the scoping. This decision needs to be properly documented with the considerations that have been taken into account. Slide 20 explains how a normative VT control framework could support. A text control framework, TCF, is an internal control instrument specifically aimed at the text function within a company. A TCF is not limited to the text department, but an integrated component of a company's business and internal control framework. Based on many years of expertise in this area, Phoenix Consulting developed a normative control framework for indirect taxes, the so-called VT control framework. The actual situation within the organization is then measured against this yardstick, generally resulting in a summary of the differences. Analysis of these gaps and the associated risks may lead to acceptance or to proposals for improvement. It is an efficient and effective approach that challenges the relevant process owners. Slide 21 shows a sample of a normative control framework that can be used as a yardstick. To continue the risk area of incoming invoices, we show you here a benchmark example of a normative AP process. The control activity, the test of control, and the frequency are important for an effective an efficient implementation and shows how an organization is in control. As said, the current as is process can be measured against and the outcome results in gaps. A sound decision can be taken whether or not to close. Slide 22 gives an overview of other change management areas that should be considered. We have shown an example that relates to transferring processes to a shared service center and shows the controls that should be implemented to manage the risks that come up. Here an overview of other changes that will be dealt with during the workshop. 